Well, good morning, Greenwich, and welcome to the Friday, October 29th edition of the Basement Academy. October 29th. Wow, where did this month go? Mm. Time does seem to be moving swiftly, uh, though it just comes a day at a time. Uh, as we dive on into a morning psalm, as we uh, continue our reflection, pray that uh, this week's end will have you reflecting on God's grace to you, but also challenging, hopefully challenging you to be a faithful witness. Our morning psalm we have read a number of times uh, over these many months uh, on the 29th day. And so this is a psalm of David, and listen for the voice of of the Lord. We've been talking about evangelism, the, the voice of the Lord going out. Psalm 29 uh, offers this. Ascribe to the Lord, O mighty ones, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord thunders over the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is majestic. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks in pieces the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf, Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord strikes with flashes of lightning. The voice of the Lord shakes the desert. The Lord shakes the desert of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord twists the oaks and strips the forests bare. And in his temple all cry glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord is enthroned as king forever. The Lord gives strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace. Mm, Lord, may it be so. Give us ears and give our loved ones in our village ears to hear your voice speaking to us for strength and for life and for peace. Amen. Okay, as <clears throat> so we wrap up this week, I've been thinking about telling our story, right? Bearing witness in our village. And so, again, this image of you as a strategic insider in a web of relationships that no one else on planet Earth has. And, and it's believing that God has placed you there intentionally. He has prepared good works for you to do in advance. This, this is something God planned for you to know these particular set of people that you do. Family, work, old friends, neighborhood, etc. And so it's thinking intentionally about that. That this is where God intends for you to bear witness. And so yesterday was talking about preparing to tell your own story in some very condensed or short version, kind of so that you can easily, kind of on command, just you're prepared to, to bear witness to folks when they might ask. Again, they might not ask directly, but indirectly, you bearing witness about God's work of grace in your life. I gave my little bullet point version. I'm sure that was not a hundred words. I want to come at it another way. Okay, you hear the words once upon a time. I guarantee that's the way you quiet a, 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 certainly a group of children and it really works pretty well for adults also. Once upon a time, there was a prince <laughs> and he lived in a castle and there was a dragon outside that castle. And one day the king said to the prince, go fight the dragon. And so there's something in us <laughs> that loves to hear a story. God made us this way. I believe what we actually have is we are living a story, right? We are living, once upon a time, God created the heavens and the earth. That's kind of how the, 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 the story begins, the scriptures begin. And every good story ends with, they lived happily ever after. And if you read the book of uh, Revelation, they're there in the city, the re re renewed garden, and there's fruit and there's trees and there's life and there's no need 
uh, for the sun because the lamb is their light. And so there is this happily ever after that is presented to us. There's a way of thinking about evangelism. All this we've been talking about for these three weeks. Evangelism is simply helping people to see their life story as part of the big story that God is unfolding, okay? To help people see that their story is connected to the story, the the majestic story of what God is doing from beginning in creation through the the Abraham, Moses, David, Israel story to the Jesus story to the Paul and the church story to help them see their story is connected to this big story that life has meaning, life has coherence. Things are working from once upon a time to happily ever after and we want them to locate themselves in that story. A person who is not does not know Jesus, is not a person of faith, the, the, their life is not connected to some big overarching theme uh, story that is going on. Often people experience life as random and arbitrary and I'm just floating as a as kind of um, Forrest Gump, right? The little feather that was just floating and Forrest Gump's life was just random, just moving here and there. <clears throat> and so evangelism is you telling your story as an expression of the big story and then helping them to maybe make a connection. Oh, that they too might be part of this big story. God actually cares for them. God actually loves them. God did not just love the world, but God loved them. This person in your village, a family member, a coworker, a neighbor, a friend. I think the gospel of John, I I talked about John 11 being kind of a go-to story for me when people ask that question, why would God? And so John 11, the the raising of Lazarus, I find to be a very uh, important story to respond to that. Well, I want to talk about the gospel of John and these metaphors or images or symbols of salvation that John gives us repeatedly. Well, it's Jesus giving them, but John records them. Um, this really goes back to uh, our theology series from last year. I think I'm actually, we're going to do a replay on that here soon. But um, in the Gospel of John, we have a, a, a set of images where Jesus gives to us different for lack of any other word, metaphor, a word picture that that talks about salvation. And, and it's not any one particular word picture that is the exclusive word picture. So people talk about, you know, you must be a born again Christian. That's one image of salvation that's given us. Jesus talking to Nicodemus, you must be born again if you want to see the kingdom of heaven. So the image of birth or new birth, okay? But so we have an image in, so that's in chapter three, the birth image, okay? It's like, I get a fresh start. I'm a new person, okay? That's one way of thinking about salvation. Uh, Jesus meets the woman at the well, uh, the, uh, the, and, and she's had five husbands, and the, the man she's living with now is not her husband, and she's drawing water, and I will give you water that will you'll never thirst again. Give me this water, she says, and so the image of water and thirst, okay? I talked in my own story about spiritual hunger. That's the image from chapter six. I am the bread of life, and so spiritual hunger, spiritual thirst, and so, and so as you're talking with people, you may talk about spiritual thirst. You might talk about spiritual hunger. And then you found in Jesus Christ that water to quench that thirst, that that food or that bread to quench that and satisfy that hunger. Um, We're given us the image in uh, John chapter nine. I am the light of the world. You've got a man born blind and then Jesus opens his eyes. Who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus, you you're asking the wrong questions. That's not how it works. <laughs> and so people could talk, you know, the, the song Amazing Grace. I once was blind, but now I see. You might want to talk in that language, 
okay, that I didn't understand what was right in front of me because I was spiritually blind. And then God opened my eyes and I saw the light, okay? So that, that, that darkness to light, blindness to sight uh, image. And so um, the shepherd, the sheep are, are weak and lost and afraid and under attack by the wolves. And so you might speak in terms of feeling like I'm just bumping through life without a clue. And then I found, I heard a voice because in, in John chapter 10, my sheep hear my voice. I, I heard a voice speaking to me and I felt like a sheep that all of a sudden had found his shepherd. <laughs> and so the image of the good shepherd who lays down his life for the sheep, who protects from the wolf. And so there's a lot of images there that can be uh, leveraged into telling the story. Um, John 11, the raising of Lazarus. I felt like I was just spiritually dead and all of a sudden, I found myself walking about. <laughs> I was alive. And Jesus is the resurrection and the life. Okay. So feeling like we're in a, in a spiritual tomb of some sort. Um, in John chapter 14, Jesus says, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. The life is kind of playing off that resurrection metaphor. But I am the way. It, literally, the word is, I'm the path. Okay. And so we could talk about just feeling lost. It's like I felt like I was just in the woods. I was completely in the wilderness. I had no idea where I was. I had no idea what was going on. Then all of a sudden, I saw this little clearing and I put my feet on this path and I found this path. And I found that Jesus is the way. I, Jesus was the way that makes sense to me for life. And so you could talk about your life being lost and then kind of being found or, or, or finding the way. Uh, I am the truth. And so, you know, we could talk about just being awash in a world that just seems like the world is full of lies and liars and all the fake news and all the noise about politics and all the noise we get from the advertisers and social media. You don't know who you can trust anymore. And I found myself hungering for someone who would tell me the truth. And then all of a sudden I began to read the Bible and these words made sense like no other words. And these words I found to be true. And so you talk about your life, finding meaning and purpose and essentially salvation through the pathway of truth, okay, against the lies and errors of the world. Um, in John chapter 15, Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you abide in me, you will bear much fruit. It is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit. And so salvation being this kind of like, a dry withered stick and then all of a sudden you know you get connected to life and you find this this life kind of flowing through you and a fruitfulness coming to your life meaning and purpose and clarity and a sense of joy and a sense of abundance um uh, and, and so love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and gentleness and faithfulness and self-control the fruit of the spirit as we read in in, in paul's letter uh, Galatians uh, chapter 5. And so you might talk that way about uh, finding uh, a fruitfulness to your life and, and, and direction and purpose and abundance in your life uh, when you uh, surrendered or gave yourself or got connected to kind of, again, the images, the, 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 the branch abiding, abiding in the vine. And so each of these images are speaking to some aspect of the human condition, okay? Human condition, that idea of being made in God's image, but being fallen. So there's a blessedness and a burden and a brokenness uh, that each of us, every human being bears. And so speak your own story, tell your story from the angle of one of these metaphors, one of these images, okay? I felt like I had nothing going on in my life and all of a sudden I, I went to church a couple of times or I began to read the Bible or I heard uh, somebody talk about this Jesus guy and all of a sudden I felt like I had a fresh start, a new birth. And, and so you could tell your story, the story of salvation, what did it, and, and be honest about it, right? I mean, tell you, so for me, it would be, you know, my spiritual hunger was awakened through these disappointments, kind of the hunger thirst metaphor and Jesus quenching that. And so 
some aspect of the human condition that is true of you, well, it's going to be true of that person also. The person that we're trying to bear witness to, we know needs a fresh start. They, they need a new birth. We know uh, that they are spiritually thirsty. We know that they are spiritually hungry. We know that they are blind. Uh, we know that they are lost like a sheep who have turned astray. We know that they're dead in the tomb. Um, we know that they have to find the way through life. We know that they are uh, also uh, swirled about with a, a, in a sea of lies. Uh, we know that they are dry and withering and need to get connected to the vine. So every one of these images is true of every human being. That's a conviction we come to. It's a theological conviction. Every human being experiences the same manifestations of sin. Now, sin may, may express itself differently in each person, you know, a different besetting sin, a different kind of trajectory of brokenness, but every human being is experiencing all aspects uh, of this, this fallen life and what sin does to us. And so that's, I think, what the Gospel of John is doing is giving us a variety of images, not only one image, uh, only one way you can be saved is by being born again. Some, it's just drinking that water and you drink that water and you come alive and you are refreshed and now you know Jesus. And so it's this, it's getting familiar uh, with these images. So read the Gospel of John, uh, spend some time there. Go to each of these chapters. If, you, if you're listening on the podcast, you're not seeing. So it's chapter 3, 4, 6, 9, 10, 11, 14, and 15. But just read the whole gospel, okay? And so <clears throat> evangelism is simply learning to tell your own story through the images and metaphors of John. So some aspect of the human condition that was in need and then how Jesus met that need. Okay, it's that simple. So taking uh, the, 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 the image of yesterday, kind of telling the, the bullet points, you could say, you know, I found myself as, as one who was lost. I, I felt like I was lost in the woods. I, I couldn't find my way. You know, every time I, I tried to make a decision, I got confused. You know, I heard the voices of the world, everybody telling me what I should do. And I was just swirling about. And then I looked and it's as if I found a path through the woods, through the wilderness. And I found this place in the Bible where Jesus says, I am the way. So you can actually quote that particular thing. Jesus said, I give living water. I am the bread of life. I am the good shepherd. And so you speak the word of God, but you don't open up the Bible and do a Bible study with that person. It's in your telling of the story. And then you may say something, wrap up. And so in this strange way, I found that my little story got connected to the big story of what God is doing in this world. The God who made all things kind of in a once upon a time, God created the heavens and the earth. And I, I really come to believe that the Bible says there's a happily ever after for the followers of Jesus. And I'm just so thrilled to be in on that. And, you know, maybe you could find that as part of your life story also. So again, the evangelistic conversation, kind of role-playing that. So anyway, I just wanted to wrap up this week. <clears throat> this week kind of holds together with the idea that you have people that God intends for you to bear witness to. Indeed, certainly in your actions, that's the music, right? That's the music, the melody that attracts people so that they will want to listen to the words, the story of your life. And so I've tried to give you a couple ways of uh, telling your story and encouraging you to prepare to tell your story, okay? So I wish I could give give a, 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 a pop quiz, you know, next week to see if, if some of you've done this. But please take some time to... To, to make some notes, sketch out uh, some bullet points, you know, work through these images uh, of, of salvation and practice telling your story, even just out loud, you know, or write it down or maybe with a family member say, hey, can I, can I kind of go through a role play? <clears throat> I want to try to tell my story um, this way and have them listen and maybe you know, uh, give some, give some feedback. So, all right, well, let's close out. Uh, I've had a good week together. We'll look forward to picking up again, uh, as we'll, we'll do one more week of, uh, unlearning evangelism together. Okay. Let's pray. Father, thank you 
Thank you for Jesus and how he does quench our thirst and and satisfy our hunger and open our blind eyes and and lay down his life and protect us uh, sheep uh, and and lead us to good pasture. Thank you for all the ways in which John and the other scriptures point to salvation and what Jesus does. And we yearn for that to be true and be made known in in our village and amongst our villagers whom we love and and care for. And so we continue to lift them before you for their salvation and that you would use us in some small way or big way, whatever way you choose, to be messengers uh, of that uh, good news, uh, of that good story. And so, Father, bless us as we head into this weekend. Watch over us, our loved ones and family, as we make our prayer in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And may the God of all glory and grace and truth and life watch over you, bless you, keep you this day and forevermore. Amen.